Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. Earthmaster here checking in on this Saturday, June 5th, 6.50 p.m. West Coast time here in Southern Oregon along the coast here. Check out how many earthquakes are happening today down there in the Southern California area. I'm going to back out of here a little bit and show you guys where I'm at uh, down in Southern California today. They had quite a bit of earthquake activity. Um, and if you look at the general map here, um, over the last, at least the last 24 hours, we could go back the last couple days and you can see significant movement off the coast of Oregon, um, um, all through California, even into the Intermountain West. Um, and that's a, that's an obvious sign of regional pressure. I understand little fault systems are sep they're, they're really not separate. I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of irritated from a comment that came up earlier saying that, uh, uh, one section of a fault um, or plate boundary cannot affect a separate fault or a separate uh, uh, section. It's it just it doesn't make sense because regionally, if you look at this map, X marks the spot when it comes to what's going on in the North American plate and California, Oregon, the West Coast is on target. Let's go ahead and zoom in into the Southern California region. We'll talk about Lake Tahoe a little bit later. I mean, it's it's all over. It's just not Southern California. It's the entire West Coast is very, very active. Okay, so let's zoom in. This is the all magnitudes here. I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit more uh, to this region. Um, there we go. Okay, so we got the Salton Sea, right? Salton Sea is towards the end of the uh, San Andreas Fault Zone, okay? The southern branch of the San Andreas Fault Zone is the one that geologists worry about, people worry about, everyone worries about. If you're into geology and plate tectonics and understanding time, uh, GPS movements, buildup of stress over the years, southern section is the one where the big one is going to occur on, okay? So this 5.3, now the 5.3 is about the largest that struck down there. Um, first off, 631 uh, earthquakes. That's in the all magnitudes over the last 24 hours, and most of those have occurred today. Um, not last night, but today. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the 2.5 and above and show you guys uh, a little bit less, okay? Because <laughs> there's a lot. Um, okay, here we go. About 68. 68 earthquakes of 2.5 and above. And of course, there was quite a few um, earthquakes uh, building up down there, including uh, a couple threes, a uh, lower four. Um, actually, I should say a lot of threes, a lower four, another 4.0, right? What what do you expect is going to happen when you see this swarming activity? That's why I always get excited when we see swarming down here, especially in this range of magnitude and this multitude. Um, and now we have earlier this earlier today the 5.3 uh, and since then another 4.3 lots and lots of threes lots and lots of twos uh, another 4.2 another 3.0 uh, 3.1 and this is just a 2.5 and above you throw in the all magnitudes here and you're talking about a massive amount of earthquakes 388 did you see that number just jump up from 360 something I think it was 361 look how many earthquakes popped up on on the map just just within that short minute that uh, I was doing my uh, my little explaining here okay so look at also look at the surrounding areas here check out the wide swath of coverage that uh, this earthquake swarm is covering not specifically right there on the uh, Brawley Seismic Zone Fault, which is just an extensional fault of the San Andreas Fault, which sits up here, uh, this darker red color line. See if I can get it to pop up. San Andreas Fault Zone, right? Southern Branch. Um, so this is significant movement. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. This is really has me on guard and very nervous, uh, not only for the folks in Southern California, but the entire West Coast. And the reason why I say that is because of the activity that's been taking place not only in Southern Cal, but off the coast of Oregon. Let's go ahead and go back the last seven days, uh, 2.5 and above, and we can look at that cluster of swarm, uh, that swarm of earthquakes off the coast of uh, Northern California, Oregon, 
just west of the locked section of the Cascadia subduction zone. That's this area right here where it's locked, okay? That's the Cascadia megathrust. And all this plays in part with what's going on in Southern California, with what's going on in Central California, with what's going on in the Intermountain West, okay? You got to look at this whole general area, right? Because it's not just it's not just one little fault system. It's an entire plate, the North American plate, the Pacific plate. These things are huge. When they just move a little bit, it not only affects it's one little certain area, it could affect the entire plate boundary in certain areas. And that's what's going on in California, Oregon um, today. Oregon right now seems to be calming down, but that's still got me a little nervous because of the amount of uh, earthquake activity that struck there last week they had those uh doublets those 5.9s okay that's no that's no three pointer that's no four pointer that's no five pointer that's almost a six pointer that's a 5.9 two of them two with different depths there 14 and 16 kilometers and you look at the rest of the aftershocks there and movement around the region it varies it varies from deep to shallow and it's it's all over so that tells me right there that there's a lot of stuff going on right here, right now. I think we may be on pause here in Oregon um, in, in the Cascadia subduction zone, hopefully. Uh, give me a chance to get out of here. I just I wanted to clear my mind a little bit with what's going on, uh, you know, with my uh, the passing of my mom. I needed some mind clearing, and I, I uh, came up here to uh, uh, Brookings, Oregon area. A beautiful area, but it's right smack dab in the tsunami zone. Uh, it's not good. I do have a way out um, if we uh, do get that uh, Cascadia rupture. I only have a short amount of time to leave here, uh, but I'll be ready. Um, so I wanted to take a break, but with all the stuff that's going on here in Southern California, I feel it's necessary to uh, jump in and uh, focus on this. Uh, and I still have time. I still have significant time to, uh, um, you know, reflect on, on my own stuff. But, um, so yeah, look at that map, folks. And you tell me that it's not just in a certain area. It's all up and down this major plate boundary known as the San Andreas Fault. And it comes up to the Cascadia subduction zone. Okay, Tremor up here has been relatively quiet. So that tells me right there that... Uh, it's very possible that uh, uh, I'm kind of on the wall with this. Sometimes I think when we have more trimmer along the Cascadia that we're looking at a higher chance of a, of a rupture along the Cascadia. But then again, it, it, who knows? The, l the last major rupture, the 9.0, was back in 1700. We don't know about the trimmers. We don't know what was going on at the time. So, you know, just speculating. It could be good. It could be bad. Um, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's a toss up. I'm just a little on the uh, nervous side, uh, staying the night up here tonight, but looking at today, there's only been a couple, okay. 3.1 way off the coast there. And also a, uh, what do we got here? A 3.2. This one's kind of deep, uh, right there at the, uh, Southern end of the Gorda, uh, escarpment region but still within the vicinity of the Cascadia Megathrust. And I, I get tired of people saying, well, whatever's going on over here, or whatever's going on up here, or whatever's going on down here does not affect this area over here. That's a lie. Lake Tahoe. What's going on in Lake Tahoe area? We're looking at more, more earthquake activity. Every time we see pressure building up, directly on the coast of California, Southern Oregon, we see this movement in Lake Tahoe pick up and that's what we're looking at. They had about three, uh, two, three, two pointers, 2.5 there as well. Um, right smack dab in that area where we've been watching the swarm take place for quite a bit. And hold on a second here. Um, so yeah, movement along the west coast, northern California, southern California, this entire plate boundary here uh, is under an enormous amount of stress, okay? Look at the Bay Area. Bay Area is popping as well. Not anything major, but definitely a seismically uh, increase in that region. 
also an area stretching across from uh, Long Valley Super Volcano all the way across portions of Nevada in an odd fashion. Ridgecrest getting in on the action as well. Uh, we're still kind of watching that swarm northwest of Las Vegas. So overall, folks, into the Intermountain West, who were even seeing heightened earthquake activity in Idaho, uh, Nebraska. I think Nebraska had an earthquake this morning. I don't see it on there. Uh, I got a notification about it, but I'm not I'm not seeing it. Let me refresh this and see uh, see if it's on there. Hmm, I don't see it now. That's kind of odd. It was like a 3.1 or something I got on my uh, on my phone. Uh, but either way, Oklahoma getting in on the action. Um, you got to look at this regionally, folks. And yes, there's many many different faults and many many different separate faults. But guess what? Look at this picture. It's all one land mass. It's all one plate. The North American plate, the Pacific plate to the west. You get these two major plates. And we're, we're just a tiny little speck in there, tiny little speck. You get those two plates moving with some significant motion, significant pressure, it will affect a large area. That I could, it could go from uh, Vancouver all the way down to Southern California. I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of tired of people, you know, spurting out lies about, well, this plate doesn't affect the fault over here a hundred miles away or a thousand miles away. Yes, it does. You know, these people are thinking um, on a, these people aren't looking at the globe or at this map as a whole. This, it's big. It's big to us, but on a, on the plate boundary scale, it's small. Each, each little piece of the puzzle moving affects one another greatly, very greatly. Um, what else we got here, folks? Let's move into the uh, Indonesia area. I don't want to make a long video. I mean, it's, I'm here at a motel, so I, the, the internet. <laughs> I always complain about the internet whenever I'm traveling. It's because uh, they just they don't have super fast internet like I do at home. A um, couple fours, a little lower, 5.3. And Hawaii getting in on some of the action as well. Uh, but nothing significant there at the moment. Just be on guard, folks. Pay close attention to what's going on in Southern California, the West Coast. Okay, I still think that we could be potentially uh, looking at for significant movement here along the entire West Coast. Uh, and, and that includes me here in Southern Oregon, right smack dab on the coast. In fact, I'm only 100 feet from the ocean. Uh, got a motel here right smack dab on the beach. Uh, I can see it right here. I don't know if you guys can hear the waves, but I'm going to sit out here, watch the sunset, and uh, hope for the best tonight. Um, so, yeah, let's zoom in real quick again. 690. Okay, so the numbers are still going up. We want to watch this migration of quakes, folks. Um, the San Andreas Fault the end of it sits up here okay according to these guys that like to draw out the maps and do GPS coordinates and and that's their word you know and it's funny because they name different things this is a Brawley seismic zone this is San Andreas fault and then down here you got the Imperial fault structure well kind of one in the same if you really think about the plate boundary of it okay because these these are not fused together these are not um, not conjoined plates you know these are these are separate. These are separate plates. But on the map here, it looks, you know, they show that there's that it's not there. But but it is. It's an extensional fault. An extensional fault of the San Andreas fault zone. And uh, we gotta watch that very closely because we're within about ten miles less maybe less than ten miles with this uh most recent quake, about three miles from the uh tip of the San Andreas fault zone. Okay? And it stretches here. Don't let don't let these little break up in the lines fool you. They uh they connect. So the more earthquakes that we see, right? 391 just just today, okay? And a 5.3 and multiple fours. Come on. Something is brewing big time down there. Be on guard, be on alert. I'm not fearmongering, but I'm just speaking the truth here uh into being being uh being alert, being aware. Uh, especially with what's going on here in Southern California, the West Coast, Oregon, uh, all that area. Uh, as far as the tremor map, folks, let me go ahead and refresh this, see if it's been updated yet. Still, 
what time is it uh, it's past seven here so yeah nothing no trimmer at all and that scares me a little bit there's no trimmer at all going on all right folks I'm gonna jump off here um, you know just stay safe out there stay alert um, if anything significant happens here where I'm at I'm gonna live stream if if everything's up I, I doubt if it will though all the networks are probably going to go down um, if we get a major uh, significant uh, Cascadia rupture here but uh, if for some reason uh, I'm able to I'll go live uh, if not then I'll be uh, I'll be videotaping it but uh, first I'll, I'm gonna hightail out of here uh, I got everything just ready to go if I need to if I feel significant shaking I am out of here I'm not even joking I'm not going to sit around and have somebody tell me when to go. I will be leaving. All right, folks, have a good night. Uh, stay safe out there, and we'll chat you guys another time. Peace out.